Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. Make sure you watch till the end of the episode. These Ingersoll Rand 2545s have certain issues during the winter months. The Guru will explain how to avoid one of those issues in cold weather. Now, here is The Compressor Guru. Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. We're still working on the beast. Today we're gonna to take the cover off and you're gonna go, why are we taking the cover off? Well, when I dropped the oil out of it, it was incredibly filthy. Compressor oil generally doesn't get dirty. Uh, compressor oil wears out, but because there's no compression uh, and soot blown past the pistons like in an engine, that's what causes your black oil to go black in a car engine because there's you got your compression and then you got your uh, explosion stroke in your four stroke engine and little tiny pieces of uh, carbon blow past the rings and turn your engine oil black. However, in a compressor, the oil does wear out, but it never looks dirty. This oil looked dirty. I have no idea what they were putting in it. I know where it was set up at, but the oil was filthy and we don't want to just put plain oil in it and send it back out. What we're going to do is we're going to tear the crankcase apart. Uh, we're just going to take this cover off and we're going to use some brake clean and we're going to wipe out the dirt from the inside and hopefully we'll extend the life of the bearings, uh, both the rod bearings and the roller bearings, uh, by doing this. And we also have to replace a line that was broke when it, was, when it dropped and when we replace that line, I did not have a good used line here, so I had to go buy a line and we won't bore you with the bending of it, but we are going to pull this off and this is the flange that the intake air filter goes to and inside of it should be, but isn't, uh, and I did not tear, I did not do this to this machine, but there should be a uh, valve in here that floats back and forth, but it's gone. And I just stuck my finger in there a little while ago and it's filthy. So we're going to pull this flange off, we're going to clean it, and we're going to put a different flange on that already has the elbow in it. And this elbow is broken off. And I actually tried getting it out the other day and it didn't want to come. So it's time to get to work. It'll come down. That is not the way it's supposed to come off. Here's the good part. I didn't break this pin. I'm going to take this to the parts washer. Is it supposed to be oily in there? Oh yeah, but it's not supposed to be black. Ah. It should be clean oil. I have no idea what they were using inside of this. When you guys change your oil and it comes out and you go, that didn't need changed, it wasn't even dirty. Your compressor oil should never look like this. 
it's going to look like almost new oil and but it does not have the same lubrication qualities after it's been in the machine for synthetic oil we usually change synthetic oil every 2,000 hours or one year um, I'm going to keep cleaning don't have much else to say You want to put the camera in there and show just how clean that is? Pretty nice. So we're back from the parts washer. A beautifully laundered cover inside and out. And this baffle is in there for the low oil shutdown. And it protects the baffle from the oil moving too much and having the machines shut on and off. Now, we're not putting the low oil sensor back in but we're going to leave this in here because if it ever needs put back in we don't have to tear the crankcase apart we can actually put the float and the switch in from the outside and then we don't have to go back inside it won't hurt anything for this to be left in there but if they ever want to put the low oil shutdown back in it would be a problem if we didn't leave it in there when i dropped the cover I didn't bend or break the pin that pin is very important that's for your centrifugal unloader and when I go back in we're going to be very careful to put it in place because it goes right in the center of here and if the camera wife could do a close-up you can see where that pin runs Got it. In that little rectangle. In there. Yeah. Okay. So I have our new gasket. And I am not putting glue or sealer on this because these are pretty good gaskets. This is not known to be a leaking problem. This, these gaskets work pretty well. Beautiful. Are you sure it's in that little hole? Has to be. What else did Santa bring you? Santa brought me a tablet early. Because that's when we had Christmas with our daughter. What did you buy yourself? Wow. A, a rechargeable drill and driver because I needed it. Uh-huh. I didn't have one and you, every, every woman needs her tools. And then 
for Christmas, I opened up a whole pack of little bits and 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 drill uh, drill bits and different sizes. Driver of, bits. Driver bits. Wood bits. Oh yeah, wood bits. And all Just kinds of things for her to continue with her tomboyish adventures. Ladies, you never know when you're gonna need to have your own drill. And don't depend on these guys. And by all means, hide your drill at the house. Because they'll come in and go, hey hon, can I just borrow this? And then the next thing you know, they think it's theirs and it's gone forever. I actually need you with your drill. I want you to run your drill. But I need you to put some holes in my work cap on the truck. Absolutely, because okay. I'm cool like that. Okay, let's pick a day when it's not 25 degrees and snowing. Oh, so June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pipe plug for this hole. I'm going to put it in. And Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this flange off. And because I wouldn't normally do this, but this is broke. And I put an easy out in it and I couldn't get it to come loose. So I had another flange on a new gasket. And we're just going to stick it on and quit fighting with it. So, real quick. It should come off good. That way we don't drop it when it comes off. <laughs> I've learned my lesson, folks. Now, there is no reason, there is no reason for that, and that's wood dust. I know where it came from, and I'm going to diligently clean out as much as I can in here. That's sawdust. I'm going to diligently clean out as much as I can because that's just not good. Now, the new one... It's clean, but I got to take and do some cleaning here. Where's the old one? The old what? The one you took off. I was going to do a little inside of it. on there. It's really in there. <laughs> ah, that worked. So.
So, friends, camera wife's going to get a shot of this other side, but what has happened here is there should have been a silver uh, valve in here that's basically like two inches across the top and the shaft's maybe three quarters of an inch. When the pilot, the aux valve on the uh, machine tells it to unload and freewheel, that actually comes out here and seals against uh, seals against this surface right here. Well, somebody took the aux valve off, and by the way, it wasn't me. I never did this. And so they had somebody else's fingers in this machine other than the guru. But so they took the aux valve off, they took the fitting out that the aux valve goes in, and they left the hole here on the side. And when it when it was set in drawn air, it wasn't just drawn air from the filter, it was drawn air through this eighth inch pipe thread hole. So we're gonna put a piece of pipe plug in here and we're going to put this back together. It's pretty well cleaned out and we're going to put it back together and we're going to put a pipe plug in that hole. And by the way, I know this is wood sandpaper. My emery cloth's in the truck and it's cold out there. Well, we improvise sometimes. That's right. So, gasket's already on there. Okay. Yeah. So, folks, this is really simple. When I put the bolt turning parts in fast forward, you might say that's a really short episode, but there's a lot of good information here and I'm going to share that with you now. If you take out the auxiliary valve and open that up, make sure you put a pipe plug in the side up here at the head. Now, somebody knew just enough to be dangerous and it wasn't me that took out this valve. Because this was at an outside location, what happens with these uh, Ingersolls with the suction unloader is it will be running and be shut down at night at the end of the shift and it will be unloaded. So that aluminum piston comes out and seals against this flange. So it's unloaded. The next, they turn it off and the next morning they went out, and this is all guessing, but I've seen this several times. They go out, they turn the compressor on, and it won't make air. Because overnight, the dimensions, you know, when metal's hot, it's larger. And when it cooled down, that uh, piston in there, is, there's a little O-ring, and it's stuck. This happens... So if you have one of these types of machines and it gets cold where you're at overnight, when you shut it down, make sure you turn your unloader down and make sure that the machine is pumping, not in the unloaded position when you turn the switch off. That way, the piston that goes in here is back and when you come out in the morning, you turn it on and it will start pumping and the compression will heat it up to where it will function properly. So, cold weather is a compressor tech's friend. A lot of these weird little things happen uh, when in winter time. Uh, I used to joke around, I can tell how much below 10 degrees it is outside by how much my phone rings because a lot of weird things happen to compressors when they're really cold. So, this is an Ingersoll 2545, and if you have that on loader, make sure that it, when you shut it down at night, that it's loaded and pumping, so you don't have a problem in the morning. I'll plug this off, that'll be off the camera, and I'll plug 
put a plug in the hole where the low oil shutdown was. And the last thing we're going to do, and I'm going to, I'm going to bend it. You know what? I'm not even going to show you on camera, but there's a steel line that goes from here to here. I didn't have one. I went to the parts store and picked one up and I got dirt on this. Man, that's pretty dirty. So I went to the parts store and picked one up and this is a 5 16 uh, brake line. And this is actually, this is copper, but it's the same fittings and I will bend this to go from here to there and hook that up. The last thing I'm going to do is we have a new air filter and I'll spin that air filter in. At the end of the next episode, you'll see the work we did on this side. We'll do a walk around. We have one more episode. We're going to put the aftercooler on and, and a used... We have one more episode. We're going to put the aftercooler on, new piping, new check valve, and we will maybe discuss the cost because this is pretty interesting if we would have bought all new parts the customer would have been into it deep but uh we came up with some used parts for him and he's going to be a happy camper thank you god bless thank you for tuning into this episode of the compressor guru thank you for watching this episode of the compressor guru Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.